Hi, if you're a first time user of Jump, there's a number of nice videos on YouTube. I might suggest you check out the SAS software channel to find Jump Software Basics for Professors and Students. It's a nice overview. Let me provide you with a basic Jump tour myself. I'm going to go into Jump off my shortcut here on my desktop. What pops up is a tip of the day. You can always uncheck that off uh, for future uh, entering of Jump. If you're a first-time user, you might want to check out Enter Beginner's Tutorial. Now, as you would suspect, to open a file, you can go to File, then Open. Jump remembers the last folder that I entered. In this case, it was a folder, as we can see here, of a bunch of Jump files. Uh, I know these are Jump files because of the little blue icon uh, next to the file names that if you can see closely there's a little guy jumping that's indeed no pun intended the the jump symbol let's check out another folder of mine in this folder I have not jump files but you can see the Excel uh, symbol I have CSV files comma separated value files and Microsoft Excel worksheets here are files that Jump can also recognize. Let me go ahead and open one of them. I opened house prices, which are prices of homes relative to the size, square footage, number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms, offers, and information on whether or not the house is brick or not, and what neighborhood it comes from. There's three neighborhoods, east, north, and west. Jump recognizes data to be one of three data types, continuous, those are t data that you can number crunch or null that is data which might have numerics but there's really no meaning behind the numerics other than for ranking purposes like one for good health and two for poor health and then three nominal or sometimes called categorical which indicates what category does an observation fall in in this case brick or neighborhood Jump tells you that it recognizes the data type as one of those three by a symbol right next to the column names here in the column panel. Here we see a blue triangle. If we click on that, indeed Jump says you're dealing here with continuous data. If you click on the brick symbol, which uh, is a little red bar chart, it shows you that brick is recognizing it to be nominal or categorical. You can't even choose continuous because these aren't, after all, numeric data. Now a lot of our action will be under Analyze and Graph. Let me show you one option under Analyze, namely Distribution. If I go ahead and click in a column. You can also drag it in. I get a histogram of the data along with some number summaries, quantiles and summary statistics. Now you'll notice that the histogram is is vertically laid out. This is a little awkward to look at. In fact, if you look on our lecture slides you'll find the histograms are horizontally laid out to look at it from the same perspective you'd have to sort of turn your head to the left look from the back side it's an awkward perspective from in in my personal opinion we'll want to change that you'll see that we have next to the headers either a gray triangle or a red triangle. The gray triangles have a couple purposes. One of the most basic ones is just to close things out. If I don't want to look at that, I can close it out. I can always open it up. The red triangles provides you with a number of options that you can do for things below. Uh, here I click on the red triangle and see that there's a number of options I can supplement the histogram with. For example, if I want a normal quantile plot, it appends a normal quantile plot to the histogram. Now back to the issue of layout. If I want to lay this out horizontally, I would go to the upper 
red triangle and choose the options from it and see that there's an option of stack. You can see here stack puts it out horizontally. Now it's a bit of a pain to have to go to stack each and every time. We'll want to make this a default. I'll get to that in a moment. As I said, there's also a lot of stuff to be done under graph, many graphing opportunities. Let me go to one of the all-purpose ones of overlay plot. Overlay plot allows us to plot data as a time series or plot y versus x plots. Let's plot, for example, price against square footage. And you can see here we have a scatter plot. The dots on the scatter plot are quite small. We can change that. The dots are black. We can change that. Let me indeed show you how. We can right click on the region and you can see there's a number of options here that we can uh, pursue. For example, marker size. If I want to go with a larger marker size, we see now that all the dots have larger marker size. That might be easier to look at. We can also, under Customize, choose the marker option. We can change the marker. Let's make them um, solid squares. We can change the color. Let's make them um, red. And there you see the changing of the graph. You can also click on the axes to change the axis labels, uh, mins and maxes. You can change the scaling from linear to log. Lots of things that you can do with these uh, graphs. Now let me go back to the issue of default on vertical layout versus a horizontal layout. You can go under File to Preferences. Here are all the, let's call it, manufacturer, manufacturing settings of Jump. You can change these defaults. I would suggest you leave most of them alone. The ones that you might be most interested in pursuing, Graphs. Here under Graphs you see the default is for a small graph marker, which we had to change earlier. If you like it to be larger, let's make it large, each and every time, you can choose that as a default. And I clicked Apply. If you go to Platforms, you can scroll down and find Distribution. That's where the histogram resides. And you'll see what shows is uh, an Options box. You'll see an, there's a number of options. Some are checked off, some are not. The ones that are checked off will automatically uh, show up um, each time you uh, go into the uh, platform. Uh, the ones that are not checked off, you can add on later. Uh, they're the ones that you can find under the red triangle. For example, we didn't get a normal quantile plot when we got the histogram, but we could always add it later as we did earlier you'll notice that there's the stack option which is unchecked there's also horizontal layout you can choose either one of them to give you a horizontal layout interestingly enough um, I'm just gonna play it safe and choose both and click OK now when I go to analyze distribution I'm gonna click in price I'm also going to click in another one to show you an, a neat interaction that Jump can do. I'll click in Neighborhood, which is a categorical or nominal variable, but uh, Jump will recognize how to deal with it in terms of a distribution. We first see that now the histogram is laid horizontally, and that's great. So we can leave that as a future as a default for all future uh, histograms we see that the categorical variable neighborhood is plotted and I think you can figure out what it's doing here. There are 128 houses in this data set. 45 are 
e from the east neighborhood, 44 are from the north, 40, 39 are from the west. So it, it counts basically the number that fall in each one of the categories. And then it gives you the percentages or proportions out of the 128. Now one neat thing you can do in Jump is that it's very interactive with its, its, its graphics. If you were to click on a point or a collection of points on one graph, Jump will show you where they are on another graph. So for example, suppose I were to click north. You see a few things happen. First, on the price distribution, you can see where the houses that are north fall on that price distribution. Looking here, they tend to look, and they're the darker shaded uh, values, they tend to be on the lower end of the distribution. You can also notice that we have here in the data table those values highlighted, namely the north values, because that's what I clicked. So if I wanted to change that, let's go ahead and click, for example, west. Now the highlighted values in the data table are all the houses that are from the west neighborhood. Uh, we can see from this that west neighborhood homes are on the higher end of the distribution. So this is really a nice way to do sort of informal exploratory data analysis uh, visually and to get a feel for where data sort of in a, in a correlative sense uh, reside on one graph versus another graph. Now if I click out, you'll see that Jump continues to have those rows selected. In particular, I left off on having West uh, selected. If you look down here under the Rows panel, you'll see that there are 39 selected out of the 128. If, unless you, if you don't unselect them, they will continue to be selected in any subsequent analysis. So if I were to, for example, go back to graph, and plot price versus square footage again, you can see now the markers are larger because we made that the default. You'll notice that there are a number of points, 39 in particular, that are dark. Those are the highlighted points. And the rest of the data are faded and sort of put into the background. Now, if we don't want this to be the case anymore and we want all the points to appear, we have to go to selected uh, and, and have them unselected. Now, there's a two ways actually to do it. You can click on this selected or you can come up here to rows choose rows and clear row states let me do it that way now you see that all those rows that were highlighted are no longer highlighted if i go back to the hist to the excuse me the scatter plot you'll see now that all the points uh, are indeed dark and none of them are faded i mentioned this and i want to end on this real quickly because sometimes when you, I've uh, noticed for myself and for my students, um, you're navigating around, you may accidentally hit a point here. Um, let's say I'm wondering what this point is, it's point 41. And you can see it's been highlighted. Now, as I said, you may have accidentally hit that point, or you may be interested in investigating upon that point, but you'll see what happened. Namely, that point is darkened, and then the rest of the scatter plot is faded. Uh, what I've had encountered is that students would copy this graph, let's say into Word, and then print it out and submit it as part of a project. I'd look at the graph and say, boy, this graph is a little hard to look at because, indeed, the points have been faded out. And this is probably an accident that was unknowingly done. So be on the alert. If you have a graph where all the points are not dark, 
uh, and some of the points or uh, many of the points are faded out, you probably have a row that's been selected and you'll want to clear it out. And so if I go ahead and clear it out, I'll hit on selected, double click on it. Now we get a scatter plot showing all the points darkened out. Well, that's good for this video. We'll be revisiting you on other issues in the future.